Okay, y'all. Uh, this is more impromptu than usual because we weren't planning to do a show tonight. But I started reading up on this uh, SOPA thing, which might as well have been Stop Online uh, Anything Act. <laughs> uh, I can see why nobody thought this thing would get this far because when you sit and read this thing and go over what it actually does, you honestly have to wonder if anybody in D.C. understands anything about how the Internet actually works. Um, <laughs> well, I, think they, I think everybody knows how it works. I just think, I won't discredit people on how they, how they think, how they, and, and not knowing it, how it works, but they have different ideologies in how they would like it to, you know, how they would like it to go. I mean, I would give them that. I mean, that's why we disagree about ideology all the time. Well, okay, but okay, this thing is called the Stop Online Piracy Act. Right. And it's following the long standing tradition of whatever you name a bill, it won't do it. It'll do the exact opposite, and it may even do some bad things. Um, you know, this is being heard in committee. They're not letting any of the opposition in to talk about it. Uh, it's been referred up to the Senate committee. So I mean, this is this is almost law at this point, which is a scary concept. Because the basically the idea of this thing is the United States is China in terms of its internet uh, policy. You know, it's the the you the government will decide what sites are okay for the DNS to access and not. Uh, it, it's being done under the guise of preventing piracy, but it's the bullshit. It's, it won't prevent any piracy. At all. <laughs> well, it, see, here's the thing. Um, I can, I can give my short answer to this whole thing. Of course, I'm not. What you and I are probably now know fellow political shows to be pretty much uh, pro limited government. So anything that expands the scope of government, you and I are off the bat going to uh, disagree. With. But I want to take this out of the context of it being government. Just for just for betting purposes, I want to be a, a devil's advocate because one thing that I've been learning of recent of these causes and, 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 and scares is that both sides present a lot of sound bites. And I'm reading these bullet points um, where it says, "Oh, it's going to cripple the economy, prevent startups." I need. I want now beyond saying no. I reject it. Too much government. Um, where do they get these bullet points to say it's going to happen? Where, what in the bill will cause that to happen, I guess, is, is my vetting in, in devil's advocate position. Basically, uh, the end result of what this bill does. Uh, yeah, right. see, that's, that's you're summarizing it. I want to know where in the bill does it say that. Because we're getting information from others who, you know, definitely have a bias, and then they, they create an entire... Um, you know, it creates an entire bandwagon that people just tend to, you know, get get on board with. So I know it says the sponsor of this. Well, I'll say that that was what I was going to do this weekend. I was yeah. going to pull each section up, but we have to do this now with like five uh -huh. seconds of prep work. <laughs> uh -huh. okay. uh, it's like I, 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 I'm in the I'm in the middle of finding the exact clauses of the bill, but it's now you're now you're gonna have, now I'm gonna have to, you know. I mean, this is a 78-page document, Marcel. <laughs> this is not a... It's like any law. It's... Hang on. Uh, okay. So, it started with a guy in Texas. What kind of Smith Lamar? The co-founder actually realizes it's a bad idea now. Co-sponsors are a bunch of people from various states. From North Carolina to Nebraska to Florida, California, Louisiana, Mississippi, Pennsylvania, New York, Arkansas, Michigan, Ohio, Georgia, Tennessee. Uh, action by attorney and friends. The attorney general may commence a personal action again, a restraint. Uh, a restraint of domain name use, in other words, the uh, DNS, you know, repaying. Okay, here we go. It, it, this is it. 
It's not only unless the, unless the Attorney General is on at the federal level to seek a court order against U.S. directed foreign internet site committing or facilitating online piracy to require the owner, operator, or domain name registrant or the site or domain name itself if such persons are unable to be found, cease and desist further activities. Yes. Including uh, specified on actual property offenses under the federal criminal code, including criminal property infringement. Okay, well, off the bat, I, th I don't see, I'm not immediately a knee, knee jerk in here. Um, the they're going after foreign internet, I know exactly who they're targeting. There have been, there have been a tremendous amount of Russian sites peddling, you know, ship child pornography, uh, internet movie databases and music piracy that are all hosted on um, foreign servers. I don't know what this bill, how this bill could authorize what a treaty with these other countries to then enforce it. How are they going to block it? What they're going to do, what, here's what they're going to do, Marcel. If this, if this bill becomes law, here's what's going to happen. I, as a copyright holder, right now we have the DMCA. I go, I make a DMCA complaint. I say this infringes on my held copyright material, and the site gives me a warning. If I don't take it down and the person says they didn't take it down, then they say take it down for us, and, this, and the website takes it offline. You know, it's like you make the complaint, it goes through the thing. If I think it doesn't infringe, I go through the counter complaint process. Uh, basically, there's a, there's a safe harbor protection in the DMCA, which basically says we go through this complaint process. Uh, you know, you basically have to say, I'm the copyright holder, here's the thing, yada yada. What this does uh, is they skip everything. They skip the courts, they skip the complaints, they skip everything. They go immediately to an injunction. Uh, they go immediately to the Attorney General. They say, I think there's infringement. Don't just take the content down. Change the DNS settings so when somebody types in the domain name, they get redirected to this site has been taken offline. In other words, if like we've we posted things on YouTube.com where we had that yada yada news thing and we got warnings. Uh, one of our things due to music running in the background is not allowed to be seen by anybody in Germany. In the case of if this was law, YouTube.com would no longer be accessible. You type in YouTube.com, you'd get redirected to a federal hold page if you're within the borders of the United States. Well, let's, let's first take a step by step. The first paragraph has nothing to do with domestic websites. This is and it's basically authorizes the Attorney General to seek a court order, which still means habeas corpus is being followed um, because they're getting a court order. It's not saying the Attorney General can. So the Attorney can seek a court order against a U.S. directed foreign internet site. So this is, YouTube's not a foreign internet site. They can, they can do it against any site. Let me see. But Control it's not file. stipulated here. I'm, I'm still reading. This, this to me is attacking Russian, Russian posted sites. That's the whole first paragraph I've read so far. Now, I'm, I'm moving on to see. I'm trying to read as fast as I can see. Sets for an additional two step process that allows an electoral property right holder harmed by a U.S. directed site dedicated to infringement. Uh, okay, okay. Bit. Go to section 101 definitions. Let me, you need to understand the terminology of this bill for a moment. Foreign internet site. The term foreign internet site means internet site that is... There are clauses in the bill, but I haven't had the prep time to pull the exact clauses up that basically redefine. There's a clause in here somewhere, and now I'm frantically searching for it uh, to pull it up to you, which basically states, uh, it, you know, this. they make this sound like it's all foreign, but somewhere in here there's a clause, and it, I didn't write it down specifically because I was going to take time to go through the whole bill over the weekend, uh, which basically redefines foreign as anything being accessed being accessed from inside the borders of the United States. So it redefines foreign to be everything domestic also. 
Basically, anything with an IP address is a foreign entity and should be controlled this way. Text of legislation. This is a short title table of, con your table of contents here. Um, Alright. Action by Attorney General to protect U.S. Coast customers and prevent U.S. support of foreign infringing sites. That's one. Market based. There must be other parts of this bill. Uh, that are that are uh, are in, are in that. Okay. Oh, additional enhancements to combat. Okay, it's under Title Two. It seems like okay. I see. There's see, this, this bill has been deliberately written to be very misleading. It's <laughs> all right. Title One. That's Title One. All right. Title One seems to be dedicated to to a, to a foreign response. Uh, market based. Uh, market-based system to protect U.S. customers and prevent U.S. funding of sites dedicated to the theft of U.S. property. That's totally targeted to foreign uh, because they're, they're, the law is putting us as a U.S. property. Immunity for taking voluntary action against sites dedicated to theft of U.S. property. Immunity for taking voluntary action against sites that endanger public health. Um, guidelines to denying U.S. capital to notorious foreign infringers. So Title One seems to be very oriented to um, non-U.S. sites. Now Title Two, this worries me here. This title does. Title Two is an additional enhancements to combat intellectual property theft. Aha! This is where people. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, like I said, okay. this is. The, it sounds innocuous. Start reading it. That's. <laughs> well, title is because there's two major titles, man. You go through Section 101. Through 107, and that's all foreign. Now you go to t Title II, Section 201 and 205. Um, although they put more foreign shit in here, but look at this: Section 201, streaming of copyrighted works in violation of criminal law. That would probably affect YouTube. I'm gonna have to go to Section 201. Let's go ahead and jump to Section 201. Um, go ahead and try to get to 201. I'm here. Hey, and ironically, for those of you who are wondering how far down in the document section 201 is, it's about two thirds down. <laughs> right, so, section 202 trafficking in inherently dangerous goods or services. I'm going to have to see what that is. Protecting U.S. business from foreign economic espionage. Amendments to sentencing guidelines. Uh, I, I love the part about part about not being fined more than two million dollars. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Section one hundred two. Okay, definition of purpose. This section of foreign internet site or portion thereof is foreign infringing site if the internet site or portion thereof is a U.S. directed site and is used by users in the United States. So, a Russian site, for example, um, a movie, a movie site, right? And and its purpose is to sell them to the United States. The owner or operator of such internet site is committing or facilitating the commission of criminal violations that are punishable under sections, we're going to have to go to 2318 and subsequent numbers, um, or Chapter 90 of uh, uh, Title 18 United States Code. And the internet site would be, by reason of acts described in paragraph 1, be subject to seizure in the United States in an auction brought by the Attorney General of such site were a domestic internet site. How can, now that's a contradiction, how can a foreign site be a domestic uh, Like I said, the law rewrites itself. This is why I had this in bullet points and then I wanted to go into detail with it, but we, I, I'm not yeah, prepared. Yeah, but see, those are like, those to me, I'm sorry, sound like, you know, political campaign things. That's why I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I'm, I always balk at things that seem to um, but that is literally what this law does. What it says is it says yeah, basically it redefines domestic. This is the great firewall of the U.S. is okay, what this is. Four points the cripple will possibly kill two point eight trillion worth. But we first have to, before we even go into that, because see, I don't accept things that are just, you, see, that, you know, that, uh, I know a lot of people do and they go, whoa, and they start reading it. That's why those notorious emails that go around, even... They go, oh, look, Obama this and that, and birth certificate this, and oh, you know, I, I'm so sick of those emails that are just filled with all kinds of stuff, and then there's no backing on why. So, 
So I, that's you know that's just how my mind works. I immediately go, okay, let's first figure out what this bill is actually saying. Um, okay, so the internet site would, by reason of acts described in paragraph, paragraph one, be the subject to seizure in the United States in an action brought by the Attorney General if such site were a domestic internet site. Okay, so if a site is the internet site, a portion thereof, or oh, well, portion thereof is U.S. directed. Okay, in other words, if there is a site that is helping a foreign site, and that is within, because they use the word portion. And, and something as simple as a link could be interpreted that way. Could be, maybe. Well, that well, we're, 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 the, the people who are primarily going to be making the complaints that fall under this are the same people who have done things like somebody rips their camera out to catch their kids' first steps and forgets to turn off the radio before they do it, and the radio happens to be playing a copyrighted song, so the background noise for their baby's first steps is a copyrighted song. These people have pursued that video must come down now. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm sorry, I didn't think to turn off the radio before I caught Junior's first steps. <laughs> I mean, that's that's not infringement on my fact. That's something that happened to be happening at the time. <laughs> All right, in personam, the Attorney General may commence an in personam action against the district of a domain name used by a foreign infringing site. That's how they get it, the seizure. A restrict of a domain name used by a foreign infringing or an owner or an operator of a foreign infringing site, okay? In rem, if through due diligence, the Attorney General is unable to find a person described in subparagraph A or B, or paragraph 1, or no such person found, has an address within ju judicial district. I mean, so, in other words, if they're not in the jurisdiction of the United States, the Attorney General may commence in rem action against a foreign infringing site now, how they do that, they need to have a treaty, because if it's foreign, you know, that goes as far as... No, what they're going to be doing is they're not going to be in treaties. What they're going to do is they're going to put, you know, a great firewall up in the U.S., which means if you're accessing through a U.S. ISP, the, IS, the DNS list is going to be changed, so it'll, it'll redirect to a government block page. Uh, and they're going to cut off funding, which they'll make it illegal for... AdSense, basically anything. So now, the follow the money approach, I, I can see having relevance. But what's? Uh, but why then are you doing the DNS? Why are you putting up the great firewall in the U.S.? I gotta, I'm sure that's going to be described in the process below. It's got to be because um, the law has to be explicit on what the action can be. Well, we're going to get there. Okay, now, uh, upon commencing an action under this subsection, the Attorney General shall and send notice of the alleged violation and intent to proceed under this section to the registrant of the domain name with internet site at the postal electronic mail addresses. Okay, so they, they, this goes over a warning system. Appearing in an operable, publicly accessible database registrants of any... Which you can't really this feedback thing. Okay, at a post... Okay, so at a registrant of domain name with internet site. One... Uh, at the postal or electronic mail addresses appearing in the applicable public accessible database of registrants. So they're going to go to the you know, DNS registry and, and, and basically find information of where to send this stuff to. If any, and to the extent such addresses are really available, and via the postal electronic mail addresses of the registry. All that shit is the DNS uh, source. Okay. To yep. the owner of the internet site, the primary postal electronic, same thing. And there are such form as a court may provide. Okay, that's all just... So this right here is saying that the Attorney General cannot just simply shut it off. A warning must be given. Um, on application of the Attorney General following the commencement of action, so saying, okay, they, okay, the court may issue a temporary restraining order, a, prelim a preliminary injunction, or an injunction in accordance with Rule 65 of Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. So that's actually following normal... I mean, those are all normal codes that we currently have. I guess the restaurant of a domain name used by the foreign infringing site or owner or operator of the foreign infringing site. It seems like, it really seems like they're not blocking. They're just saying, if this, let's say there's a Russian Damn it. site. Skype, stop it. What? Skype keeps popping things over you. Oh, oh. Um, uh. It seems to me that their way of stopping this so far, of what I'm reading, 
uh, very very plainly is that if this Russian website or uh, uh, Nigerian website, let's just say, has a, a, a domain hosted on U.S. soil and it's going through our, our, our registers, they're shutting it down. That's what that from from, from there. Yes, yeah, so they'll remove it from the DNS server that that foreign site. So it's like um, I remember ZML was a was a movie database uh, company. So I guess somewhere I, I want to say maybe I don't know if it was Ukraine or somewhere in Russia, or whatever. But I know that they kept switching uh, domains and were eventually shut down um, by the federal government anyway under current law. So. That makes me wonder if it's already happening and we're already able to shut down DNS um, and, and you know routing to these sites currently. Makes me wonder. They want. Why am I, they why want. Do I, why do we need this further? If they're because I've already seen clear examples of websites that are a foreign based. You know, and and and, and uh, this is about removing safe harbor. And the fact of the extra erroneous, unnecessary steps of going through full due process to do that. Okay, they just want to jump straight to the ban. All right. Well, they I'm trying to see so far, they have to follow certain guidelines here. Now, actions based on court orders, right? The process server, see, this is all the same. This is all law. They're going to process servers on behalf of the Attorney General with prior approval of the court. May serve a copy of a court order. This is all. That's not anything expediting. Well, he's, um, like I said, you haven't given me the, the prep time to... Well, to we're going through the whole thing. We're, this is the whole thing we're reading. It. Um, where I lost my place. Uh, Coming pursuant to the subsection... All right. Reasonable measures after being served with a copy and law pursuant to the subsection following shall apply. In general, service providers shall take technically feasible and reasonable measures designated to prevent access by subscribers. That's all law located within the United States. Um, such actions shall be taken as judiciously as possible. But in any case, within five days after being served with a copy of the order, or within such time as the court may order. So it's up to the judge. The service provider shall not be required, other than as directed under the sub, uh, sub paragraph to modify its network. So, um, shall not be required to modify its network, software systems, or facilities, to take any measures with respect to the domain name resolutions not performed by its own domain name server, to can prevent access to a domain name to which access has been effectively disabled by other people. Seems reasonable. It's the construction of the thing the suburb shall affect the limitation of liability and search for liability. It's a text of notice. Alright, this, this is all, again, more warnings. This seems to be limiting the Attorney General a lot going through all this. Attorney, uh, Internet Search Engines. Provider of Internet Search Engines shall take technically feasible and reasonable measures as expeditiously as, 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 expeditiously as possible in the case of five days, after being served with a copy of order with such time as the court may order to prevent the foreign infringing site that is subject to the order or a portion of such site specified in order from being served. Ah, so they have to remove the, the hyperlink. Maybe that's something. Okay, so a hyperlink has to be removed from the search engine once a court order has been given to this foreign infringing site, right? Yeah, basically the, it'll be like the site. Once, once this process starts, it's as if the site never existed. Gotcha. And the, 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 the concern there that people are really having when it comes to freedom of expression and so forth is, I mean, think of how many people express ideals, uh, especially in the modern age, through parody. And I, I'm sorry, parody by legal under fair use could be interpreted as infringement and often is today. Uh, and this would mean basically sites like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter can no longer allow people to talk about anything that's ever been copyrighted or anything that references anything that's ever been copyrighted in a parical, political, pretty much any way. You know, and I, I'm sorry, the way you relate ideals is to put it in a socially relevant context. 
uh, which you know, it's, I, I don't think that should be. I mean, that that that's going to cripple a lot. Of well, look, we already know. You and I are already going to disagree with this, but I, I'm seeing now my second my second thing. I just, I'm just being devil's advocate here, you know, I just want to make sure... Uh, well, you spent 25 minutes explaining why uh, the Great Wall of the U.S. is a good thing. Let's <laughs> see, so, definition of purpose and secure at... Uh, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in section 103, almost 103. Modifications of the of orders, relief from the institutional property. Um, uh, a lot of this is already current laws, and they mean relief determined under paragraph. These are... Or install. Okay, market based system to protect U.S. customers and prevent a U.S. funding of sites dedicated to theft of U.S. property. Alright, let's see what they mean by this. Dedicated to theft of U.S. property. Internet site is dedicated to theft of U.S. property if it is an internet site or a portion thereof that is a U.S. directed site and is used by users within the United States. And either the U.S. directed site is primarily designed or operated for the purpose of has only limited purpose or, or use other than or is marketed by its operator or other acting in concert with that operator for use in offering goods or services in a manner that engages in, enables, or facilitates a violation of Section 501, a violation of Section 1201, the sale or distribution of promotion of goods, services, or material being of counterfeit mark in the term of in Section 34D of the Relating Act. Okay, so these are getting into piracy and copyrights, the operator of U.S. directed site is taking or has taken deliberate actions to avoid confirming a high probability of the use of U.S. directed site to carry out acts that constitute a violation of the above. Operates the U.S. directed site with the object of promoting or half promoted its use to carry out acts that constitute a violation of the above. And, and, that, and that, that right there, what you're getting into, is one of the other things people are greatly concerned about. This basically mean that this is basically going to put the burden, if they want to even stay online, onto sites like Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, where basically they have to review and kind of guarantee it does it isn't something that's going to trigger this before they can even allow it to be published. That's fine if you have the resources to sit there and either automate screening or screen everything. If you're a little tiny startup without these resources, that means allowing community interaction of any kind, you're risking being taken out of business. I mean, that's that's a pretty high burden to put on the individual sites. Hey, now, can I ask you a question? Is YouTube, does YouTube make a profit? Uh, there's debate in that. <laughs> what about Facebook? I think Facebook's making money now. Okay, um, this definitely, Section 103, first part, is not uh, solely to the jurisdiction of foreign. So, pretty much, th but well, I, I'm just curious. We already have laws that shut down websites. I'm very curious why this is needed on, on this section. Well, that, that, that's the other question everybody who's against this is asking. is like, why do we need to rush this? Because like you're saying, the DMCA and the supplemental laws that supplement the DMCA already give the ability to do this. Now it provide it, it provides a check and balance where it's it's the last resort if all of the things fail. This basically reverses that and makes this the first resort, which is yeah, so look at this denying, denying U.S. financial support of sites dedicated to theft. And how would they? Okay, let's see what this is. payment network providers. Except in the case of effective counter notification pursuant to paragraph five, a payment network provider shall take technically feasible, reasonable measures. Is especially okay. Basically, reasonable as fast as you can. But when in the case of five days, this is almost the same fucking verbiage. Uh, to suspend its service from completing payment transactions involving customers located within the United States. Okay, so if someone's buying these movies from the Russian website. Uh, the way that's so written, though, how it's, would it's, they, it's how would they how would they do that? It's deliberately vague, and it also has to do with, um, uh, so it, it, it's written deliberately vague so they can kind of expand it to be whatever the heck they feel like, uh, including pretty much anything from AdSense yeah, to... Yeah, I'm a bit scared of that, because look at this, it's saying suspend its service from, oh, suspend its service from completing payment. Okay, so it's not, okay, so it's suspending its service. 
what, well, you, I guess you're just shutting down the website. I mean, but I don't, what? I'm a little bit confused at that part. Um, and then it's going, prevent its service from providing advertisements to be relating to the internet site. Cease making available advertisements. Cease providing or receiving any compensation for advertising. Right? Design agent. Interesting. Each payment network provider and each internet advertising service shall designate an agent to receive notifications described in paragraph. That means, no, okay, that's a regulation. That's yeah, no, that, that's the other thing. The, 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 that's the other real concern here. This is effectively putting a mandatory regulation layer on anyone and everyone who operates a website of any kind. Okay, yeah, look, this is going to, that, all right, you've just increased, the designated agent is already increasing the cost. So I found one, uh, notification regarding internet sites dedicated to theft of U.S. property. The crime and subject of paragraph B, let's see, a physical or electronic signature of a person authorized to act on behalf of the holder of intellectual property right harmed by the activities described in such section. Okay, so the notification regarding internet sites that he gets that. A notification under this paragraph is effective only if it is a written communication that is provided to the designated agent of a payment network provider or an advertising service and includes substantially the following. So they have to prove that there is this intellectual property signature, identification of internet sites, an identification of the specific facts to support the claim that the internet site or portion thereof is dedicated to theft of U.S. property. So, yeah, yeah, basically, like you're saying, that regulatory step and that added cost, like I said, if you're a little tiny company, like if you're like a startup, if you, if you start the next, let's say, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, and all of a sudden you have tens of thousands of people posting through your system, that means you now have to incur the cost of meeting this regulatory audit of this stuff or go offline, which... I'm sorry, that's not a fair burden. And there, that, there is a reason we put the safe harbor clause in the DMCA and we put limitations in a, in a, in a kind of a, a volley, counter volley system to the way this is handled right now. We agree, piracy needs to be stopped, but we should not be trying to stop piracy at the cost of preventing business startups and you know what the internet has enabled the little guy to compete with the big guy on a fair level ground <laughs> um, yeah it's gonna cost a lot already some of the things in regulatory like removing uh, those links and advertisements and making sure they go away is that's that's a lot of that's a lot of money and expense. Like Google's going to have to create all these new technologies just to freaking you know have it just to just, just to just well, to like, break their their search engine doing what their search engine does naturally. Just to <laughs> adds another filter and all the search stuff. Okay, this stuff right here is uh, this is what I'm reading right now. I'm still in section 103. Is requirements. Uh, basic what I'm reading is requirements by the complainer and the conditions that they have to meet in order to make the complaint and how it's going to get processed basically and then they're saying immunity from it in your immunities like uh, immunity from suit other than an action pursuant to paragraph no cause of action shall lie in a federal or state court of administrative agency against, uh, against any entity served with a copy of a court order issued under a subsection or against any director officer employer or agent thereof um for any act reasonably designed to comply with this subsection. So it's, this is trying to protect innocence, essentially. Uh, I, I, and the, the, personally, I, I, I've skimmed through this. I don't think it does a sufficient job. I don't think they should need it. I, I, we already agree. Wait, we started the show. We're agreeing we don't need this. But I'm just, I'm just saying I want to put a, a lid on just, oh, it's good, bye, and all this other stuff. I just like accurate information, is how I am. You know, it's like, look. Well, no, I, I, that's, that's part of the reason I have the link to the bill here, and we are going to post the link to the actual bill when we publish this. And I encourage everybody to spend the, what's probably going to take you an hour or two to really fully read through this thing and counter way against it and so forth. <laughs> So no cause of action shall lie in any federal, state, court, or administrative agency against 
no person may rely on any claim or cause of action against a mental liability for damages to any person shall be granted against a service provider, payment network, provider, internet advertising service, advertiser, internet search engine, domain name, registry, or domain name register for taking any action described. Oh, you can't sue the people that try to screw you. Basically. Yeah, that, that's the thing. You have to bear all the costs. And, and, and that, that's the clause, that's the other thing that has a lot so of people concerned. This is protecting the complainants. Yes. And that's the other thing that has a lot of people concerned here. Because effectively, this can be used as a sledgehammer. Like, uh, Hollywood could go, you know what, we really hate that independent company that's outranking us. I know, they're infringing. And they can't counter sue us for the cost of proving they're not. All right. I'm gonna, the rest of this is like nine years capital notorious for an, uh, infringers. I've skimmed over that. It's, uh, here's what we're going to get at. Sec Title II, we're finally here. Section 201, streaming of copyrighted works in violation of criminal law. Here we go. Title 17 Amendment, Section 506, United States Code is amended as read as follows. So they're amending it. It's Maybe. not even law yet, and they're already amending it. <laughs> you know? oh, no, no, this is proposed to amend it. So okay. we create laws. We, we amend them, right? Criminal infringement. In general, okay, this is no longer form. Now we're, now we're wherever, right? Yeah. In general, any person who willfully infringes a copyright shall be punished as provided under Section 2319 of Title 18. If the infringement was committed, A, for the purposes of commercial advantage or private financial gain, B, under uh, reproduction or distribution, including by electronic means during any 180-day period of... One or more copies of phono records, or one or more co copyrighted works, or by the public performance by means of digital transmission during any 180-day period of one or more copyrighted works, when the total retail value of the copies or phono records or of the public performances is more than $1,000, or C, by the distribution of public performance of a work being prepared for commercial dissemination by making it available on a computer network accessible to members of the public. If such person knew or should have known that the work was intended for commercial dissemination. And, and Section C, in my opinion, is rather amb ambiguous. I mean, and it's not it's not it's not really specific. It's basically, well, you should have known this was going on. I, again, you have to monitor everything every and user does. I, I can tell you right now, everything in A and B is already above $1,000. The grantee. Oh, no, no, yeah, like you said, because it's assuming the full retail. Oh, no, yeah. God. It, 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 no, yeah. It, 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 this is tens of thousands of dollars. Easy. <laughs> evidence. For purposes of the sub subsection, evidence reproduction distribution of public performance covered by itself shall not be sufficient. Okay, here we go. Interesting on this line. For purposes of this subsection, evidence of reproduction, distribution, or public performance of a copyrighted work by itself shall not be sufficient to establish willful infringement of a copyright. So it, it being there is not sufficient. In this sub, sub, subsection, the term work being prepared for commercial dissemination means a computer program, a musical work, or a motion picture or other audiovisual work or sound recording if at the time of unauthorized distribution or public performance, one, the copyright owner has reasonable expectation of commercial distribution, and two, the copies of film records of the work have not been uh, commercially distributed in the United States or with the authorization of the copyright owner, or the copyright owner does not intend to offer copies of the work for commercial distribution, but has reasonable expectation of other forms of commercial dissemination of wow, that well, that copies them in every, in every in that 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 covers every possible ground. A, a judge can roll on that in just about any freaking circumstance. Don't you love the? Like, you know, it's like, <laughs> oh well, it, 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 that's like a contradiction. First, they're trying to say, oh well, there's got to be you got to show them they want to be dissemination. Oh, but if they're not going to commercial dissemination, uh, you know, maybe they intended to, right? And exactly. Like, yeah, you know, it's like, oh, but it could be a part of something. It's like the copywriter does not intend to offer copies of the work for commercial distribution, but has a reasonable expectation 
of other forms of and, and now you're starting to get what so many people are bitching at. It's like it implies, oh, don't worry, we, we worry about not crushing the little guy. But then we're going to completely undermine any ability for it not to do that. <laughs> we're just going to assume guilt. <laughs> Uh, the work has not been commercially disseminated to the public in the United States by or with the authorization of a copyright owner. A motion picture, if at the time of unauthorized distribution of public performance, the motion picture, one, has been made available for viewing in the motion picture distribution facility, and two, has not been made available in copies for sale to the general public in the United States by or with the authorization of the copyright owner in a format intended to permit viewing outside of the motion picture DVDs. Okay, this is Jesus. A long way to say all that need. Uh, had not been commercially disseminated to the public of the United States by or with the to cover it under more than 24 hours before. Well, and, and as we read through this, I'm sorry, but I can't see this as anything but an attempt to try and prop up DVD sales, which huh. I don't think it's going to do. <laughs> it's, you know, it's. Yeah. Now they're going to amend uh, uh, Section 23, 19 of Title 18. And, uh, and subsection B1, by striking, dur okay, there's by striking during any 180-day period, all the follows, and insert. So there's striking during any 180-day period, and all that follows, and inserts this, of at least 10 copies of photo records or at least 10 public performances by means of digital transmission or one or more copyrighted works during any 180-day period, which have a total retail value of more than $2,500. In paragraph one, by striking of ten more copies of phone records and all that follows, and inserting this, including by electronic means of at least ten copies, or phone phono records, or at least ten public performances by means of digital transmission, of one or more copyrighted works during the limited day period, which have a total retail value of 2500 and in paragraph three, by striking, if the offense and all that follows, in any other case, in section, subsection 3, by striking under paragraph 2 and inserting committed the purposes of commercial advantage for private financial gain under subsection A. Okay, so there, these are all amendments to Title 18. Yeah. And inserting a period in. Some of these are not consequential, but I think. Um, total retail price provisions, public performances. Okay, evidence of total retail value. Interesting. Let's just take a look at this. So this is evidence of total retail value. For purposes of this section, in section 506, total retail value may be shown by evidence of the total retail price, the person's receiving reproductions, distributions, or public performances constituting the offense would have paid to receive such reproductions, distributions, or public performances lawfully. Okay. So if that CD cost, blah, blah, whatever. Yeah, if the, if, it's a, if the box sets forty nine ninety five, it's a forty nine ninety five plus tax, but yeah, whatever. The total economic value of reproductions, distributions, or public performances to the infringer. See now, this is see now this is where we're getting into the meat. The total economic value of the reproductions, distributions, or public performances to the infringer, or the copyright owner, as shown by evidence of a fee of, ever to, uh, of a fee advertising or other revenue that was received by the person who missed the offense, or that copyright owner, sh owner would have been entitled to receive such a production as you should receive it. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot of money. That could be, that could be like a lot and, of money. You know, and that's vague to the point that that could mean anything from nine ninety five to $100,000. In other words, what would we have charged the TV station to redistribute this? That's how I'm interpreting the meaning of that. Trafficking in inherently dangerous goods or services. Okay, another, this is all amending Title 18. Intentionally traffics or attempts to traffic in goods or services and known use as a counterfeit mark on or in connection with such goods or services. This is getting the trademarks? Yeah. 
And, and, and I, honestly, I, I'm a little confused that this is even Some in here too. Some of this doesn't need to be. Well, no, no, no. It's like I, I, I like you're saying that the, the the infringement is covered by the DRM and the and, and the trademark is covered by the ITC no, courts. This doesn't even have anything to do with the damn internet where I just read. You know, this is like branding and crap. Just no, I know, I, 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 but I, I must say we have the we have the trademark courts and we already have the copyright. You know process thing for getting rid of content that shouldn't be or censoring or blocking it. So it's like, why do we yeah, need to turn this? Look at this. Serious bodily harm or death? What the hell does this have to do with internet anything? I, I mean, what, is somebody's fist going to reach for the monitor? I mean, uh, if the offender not only are this, the this, this is funny. getting into the, the basically, we're going to be like China. If we have decided it is against the public good for the information to even be accessible, the information will be blocked for the good of the public. Yeah, look at this. Those are offenses. They're talking about Shelby finding no more than $5 million in prison for 20 years from above. Nice to know in the United States of America you can be fined $5 million and imprisoned for 20 years for having something that the state doesn't what like. What does this have to do? I, I'm trying to understand what... You know, you know death, death by internet. Jesus Christ, what is this? That, this, this crap I'm reading here has nothing to do with it at all. Uh, I haven't read anything that would have to do with the internet on this, on this section. This is where... Uh, well, you know, if you're going to put in the grounds for censoring the internet, you might as well throw in anything which no, might I remotely think, you know, be objectionable. Uh, you know, no, 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 no. You know, lots of bills get compounded. <laughs> and, and they, you know, the, all, not all the context is of the same. It's like, you know, one bill can cover dealing with tunnels and then trees. Which they don't relate, but they, they pack it all in one bill. This, this section has nothing to do with well, no, and, and admittedly, if you want to censor the internet for the good of the citizens, you want to throw anything which you might find objectionable. You know, that's how they pass bills. I'm like, oh, but look, Section 203, we're protecting people, which hasn't been the internet. But then they're adding other titles that people see. This is how they, you know, you know pack things and bills where they can secretly pass crap because they point to good things. Oh, but this bill is so good because it does this. And then they get all that other garbage and say, well, yeah, Section this section 202 sounds good, but get rid of the other section. Well, now, like you say, this has nothing whatsoever to do with stopping piracy. This section right here has everything to do with censoring the internet. This is counterfeiting drugs and has nothing to do with the FDA. <laughs> this has nothing to do with what people are bitching about here. Good God. All right, protecting us this from foreign and economic espionage. This has nothing to do with it. Uh, <laughs> Sentencing guidelines. Okay, now we're back to the actual property. Thank God. <laughs> that only took how many clauses? <laughs> But, but before we go back into that, I thought of something else on Section 203, you know, with the foreign economic espionage and so forth. Isn't that the entire purpose of the ITC courts? Um, uh, I guess you could say, yeah. So why do we need this? Yeah, but see, with ITC, it usually it ends up with whatever, whatever the local country is going to, you know, is going to deal with this. Okay. Oh! Uh, wait a minute. Okay, hold on. We're almost there. I'm kinda, I want to make sure I don't miss something important. So, uh, an appropriate offense to look at an intellectual property if it's in any connection with an organized criminal enterprise. Apply an appropriate offense level in act to simple misappropriation. Trade secrets. You know, you notice uh, the people that wrote the letter, Apple and Microsoft went on there. <coughs> but Google and Mozilla and all of them went. Yeah. 
I, I, the people in opposition are, it's surprising who they are. <laughs> Google is the only one being invited to actually speak before the committee. All the others are banned. Get rid of this bill. Yeah, when they're going, everybody else on the opposition side is not invited. They're they're, right. they're not allowed. Yeah. Defending intellectual property rights abroad. Oh God. Mm -hmm. Now that cripple U.S. economy because Europe is much more. Well, and the uh, the uh, th this is the section we're getting into where a lot of people are concerned not just about it being ineffective and at it having, like you say, an adverse reaction on the economy, but also the U.S. loses its moral high ground that it stood on for the past 20 years in this crap. Saying, oh Lord, yeah, this is going to cost a lot of tax dollars. Yeah. This is like a, a accepting all the damn copyright crap from all these other damn countries. And, I mean, like training. Look at this. Training. The Secretary of State and Secretary of Commerce shall ensure that each intellectual property attaché, attaché, God, <laughs> mighty. Now we're getting into these freaking intellectual, I'm an intellectual property attaché. A point of yes, How are you doing, Mr. Zoll? I'm an attaché. Didn't you hear? Yes. <laughs> is fully trained for the responsibilities of the position before assuming duties in the United States Embassy of Diplomacy. Here we go. The embassy is going to get their intellectual property attaché. We're going to have yeah, I'm an IPA. <laughs> okay. That's going to be the new joke if this becomes law. <laughs> the activities, I mean, this is crazy. Let's see, the, the activities not to property attaches under this section shall be determined in consultation with intellectual property enforcement coordinator. Uh, training and technical assistance. Oh, well, there's more tax dollars. It's a, that, uh, yeah, it's additional. Hey, just for that. Coordination activities, in, there's coordination activities in intellectual property. Uh, at, um, at the under this section shall be determined in consultation with intellectual property. Say, in training and technical assistance, there's more tax dollars being spent. Yeah, it's like, it's a, it, now you're getting into the meat of this where it's like it's more regulation, more tax dollars, more costs, less less economic growth. <laughs> the term United States person means any United States resident or national, any corporation, partnership, business entity. Well, that's it. I've read the entire thing. We'll go forward. Yeah, that's interesting. Wow. Okay, well, we actually hit the meat of where this stuff can be very dangerous. Okay. Uh, I, I, I mean, we've recorded all of this. Uh, here's what I have half a mind to do. I'm gonna put up. I'm gonna break so we don't lose this. And then let's go over the bullet points and weigh. You know, what of this is scare? What of this is hack? Could? What of this is okay? Scare, but there are implications here, so on and so forth. And at the end of the day, what does this law really do with anything? <laughs>